Hello and welcome to another online training session with Shiro Kashi Aikido. In today's class we'll be covering the Hapo Giri. As well as looking at the standard form, we'll also be looking at four variations which will give you variety as well as the chance to practice the moves you learned in a Kensaburi. To begin with, we need to understand that the Hapo Giri is an eight directional move. Beginning in Kenkamai with the right foot forward, we need to picture a compass on the floor with the Ken pointing north. We begin by cutting to the north and then turning 180 degrees to cut to the south. Then we turn to cut to the east and again turn 180 degrees to cut to the west. From here we start to bisect the angles, cutting to the southeast, followed by the northwest, moving on to the southwest and finishing in the northeast. All of the variations we make today will follow the same pattern, so you'll quickly start to pick it up. Okay, let's take a look at the basic form. As you can see, when performing the standard form, a basic Shermanucci cut is made. The only complication is in the movement of the feet. You can see that each foot is lifted and placed in the correct position before transferring the body weight into it and making the cut. Something else you may have noticed is that every other direction change is through 180 degrees, turning to face the opposite direction, and you've probably made this turn when practicing Saburi. The turn that most beginners find difficult is moving from cut two to cut three, as you have to turn through 270 degrees, leading with your left foot, as you'll see here. And this cut's repeated when we move from cut six to cut seven. And these are generally the moves that require the most practice. Here's cut six to cut seven. In order to learn the footwork, try putting the ken to one side and walking through the steps. If you've a regular shape training area with walls, try aligning yourself with a wall. The first four moves will be to each of the four walls. And moves five to eight will be to the corners. You can see that without the ken it's much simpler, so try this a couple of times before going back to the ken. Keep in mind when you are cutting with the ken that as you turn you should drop the ken behind your back and keep your head high so you can see where you're cutting. Also, I'm now bringing my feet together as I make my cuts, pushing them apart as I finish. Now that we've looked at the basic shape, we can start to use the moves from the other saburi. In variation one, we'll use the Shomenuchi cuts from the fourth Ken saburi. In each instance, we'll make two cuts before turning. This allows you to practice the turn from the basic form along with the cutting shape from the saburi. We can also practice without a ken to work on foot placement and weight transference. Again, we can work on those tricky turns in positions three and into position seven. So one and one again, turning into two, 180 degrees, and walking forwards. Here's a tricky move into position three, turning on the spot, bringing the feet together before pushing forward and then stepping with the second cut. Into move four, it's fairly straightforward, just that 180 degree turn. Five is just a small turn to the side. A 180 into position six. And again, that tricky 270 degree turn into cut seven here. Stepping forward to the second to Shomenucci and then turning 180 to finish in position eight. And when we're comfortable with that, on that just using our feet, we can then return to using the Ken. Again, start slowly. Don't try to work too fast. Your technique will improve with time and so will your speed and your power. Work on the foot placement and the transitions. 
Know where you're going and keep your posture right. You'll soon have a nice smooth move that you'll be happy with. In variation two, we start with a straight Shomanuchi strike as we did in the previous variation. But then we make a Yokomanuchi strike, moving the Ken off to the right, stepping forward before turning. And each cut now becomes a Yokoman high gaish strike. So there's a slight angle to the cut as it comes over the head and down. In each side, you'll make two cuts before turning to the next position. The footwork in both variations one and two using the fourth and fifth Ken Saburi moves is the same. So you should find moving into this variation fairly straightforward. But again, you can progress through it slowly, make sure that your form is good. In variation three, we'll add the thrust from the sixth Kensaburi. So we start with the first Kensaburi move, straightforward strike, and then a lunge and a ski, a lunge and a thrust. And then each time you turn and cut and add the thrust in. In the fourth variation, we'll use the thrust from the seventh Kensaburi. So again, starting with a Shomanuchi strike, we'll then step forward with the left foot and thrust. And then repeat this as we turn, cut, step and thrust. Although we're stepping forward with the opposite leg, you'll find that just as with the fourth and the fifth Saburi variations, the compass points that we're cutting to haven't changed. So you now have five exercises that you can use to practice the foot movement of the Hapogiri. The standard format, as you'd be expected to demonstrate, and four variations. That's the end of this class. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time.